Hey there, everyone. Happy May the 1st. Here we are, uh, Prime Real Estate Team. I'm Tony Joe. got Kyle Kerr. Uh, Angie Hill is off right now uh, on assignment, uh, if it were. She is off today. And um, we're here to give you a, a little report, not only for today, which is Friday, but also for what happened in the month of April, because a lot of stuff happened. Hey, Kyle. Yeah, this was the month that we, you know, we've all been talking about. You know, March was kind of an interesting month for stats because the first half of the month was pre-COVID and the second half was post. It so was pretty well like March 15th. Like there was a hard yeah, date. And then, exactly. Yeah. So this is the first full month of, of the full experience of what we've kind of been going through. So Tony, what were the numbers? Uh, you know what? The nice thing about Zoom is I can share screen. So let's exactly. Show, I love it. Let's show our, anyone here who's watching. Uh, so statistically, here we go. If you can see it, ladies and gentlemen, we finished off the month with 287 sales. And you know what's going to happen? I know it. Tomorrow in the news, it's going to be, oh, my God, the sales are down 60%. I think it's 58. Oh, it's right here. 58.8%. Um, now, I got to say. 55.8, actually. Oh, uh, no, you're right. 58.8. No, 58. 58. Right. Yeah, yeah. 58. Sorry. So, okay. So, first of all, Kyle, you know that I've been saying, including to your VEMC group and a couple others, my forecast yeah. was 300 sales this month. Yeah. So, I was a little bit off, right? Yeah. Now, mind you, we have three sales that are uh, going firm today. I was kind of hoping they would have firmed up yesterday. Yeah. Then it would have been 290, <laughs> right? But, exactly. Um, so, yes, 100%. We're down 60%. But I need everyone to know one thing. There were 287 sales that happened during a month where nobody should have been buying real estate because the government shut everything down. Um, they have said, stay home unless it's absolutely critical that you need to buy or sell a house. And yeah. look what's happened. We had 287 absolute, yep. you know, it was necessary, right? Well, and I think the important thing is that when we first started the month and we did our first weekly update, we thought we were going to be about 70, 75% behind in sales. Yeah. And we ended up and, you know, we were, we were on a call this morning with some of our realtor colleagues and, and we were looking at the stats and the first two weeks we were about 75% behind, but then I think sales picked up in the second half of the month by about 45%. And so that's how we ended up at that you know, 58% behind. So as each week progresses this month, I have noticed that even on the ground, the phones are, the phones are picking up a little bit more. Yep. And as, and as, as people get used to what the new normal or what the next few months is going to look like, I think people are making a decision that, you know, we have lots of safety measures in place to keep you healthy, but we can still get out and look at properties if we need to. And I think that activity will continue to trend upwards as we move forward. Well, and that's what Angie wanted uh, to convey as well, too. When I talked to her on the phone a couple minutes ago, yeah, it's been a busier week for her as well, too. So we know traffic has been picking up. It's still not a busy time. Don't get us wrong. No, no, it no. Is, it's, it's just busier than it was. Uh, and the other thing, too, is, you know, there's a lot of judgment out there, right? Like realtors are, are, are uh, 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 judging other realtors. Consumers are judging realtors. It's like, what are you doing? You know, it's COVID. Yeah. You're not supposed to. And, and. The reality is uh, we have people that have called and said, we need to buy, we need to sell. We go through the whole raft of questions. We want to make yeah. sure that they are absolutely, it is critical and crucial that they um, uh, do activity. And as a result, Prime Real Estate team had, pro we were probably among the busiest people in Victoria, right? Yeah, in, in handling those situations. And, and those are more of the calls that I've had in the last week as well as we get ready for May and, you know, announcements coming from the government that some restrictions will be lightly lowered up. And, and those are those questions that, okay, we have tenants moving out at the end of May. We yeah. don't want to keep the property. We want to sell it. Um, you know, our kids are coming back from school. There's so many varying factors of why someone might need to sell and that they don't want to necessarily wait until July, August, September. So, no, I think, I think the people will make those decisions. And as I said, you know, we're wearing masks, we're wearing gloves, there's sanitizer everywhere. We're, we're, we're vetting people before they show homes. And so there is still a way if you have to do a real estate transaction to do it very safely. Mm -hmm. uh, and everyone's being very respectful throughout this whole process. So that's been very nice as we kind of continue through this. My only concern is it, it seems like there's been a sort of relax of some of that too. We're not doing that. Right. But it seems no. like there are some that are, that are, that are. No, no. Yeah. yeah. You know, we have an authorization form on every listing and, and those are really important steps. And it also helps the buyer understand how serious this is. If you do want to look at a property, because like you said, this isn't business as usual by any means, but um, 
you know, people are starting to make those decisions. And as they feel more comfortable with their own health and safety, yeah. they realize that there is avenues for us to explore. And, and you and I have been doing live stream open houses, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And so we're finding creative ways to, to safely show people properties, even if it isn't in person as well. Oh, and by the way, if anyone's wondering, do people show up to live stream open houses? The answer is yes. Yes. Yeah, people, people that follow us, uh, not us, but they're on realtor.ca. They notice the house is getting, having a live open. They show up at that time. Uh, it's unbelievable. It's, it's the new way of doing things, right? Well, and, and the interesting thing is, you know, we, we talked about the sales numbers, but looking at inventory levels as well. You know, oh, got I, I got that. I got that right here. I got Perfect. that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. actually, but before you begin there, Kyle, because I know where you're going with yeah. this, right? So this is, as I said, 287 sales for the month, right? And yep. I, I need people to understand it looks low. It is low compared to April. April's traditionally a busier month, right? It's but a spring I, market usually. Yeah. But look at some of the other numbers, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, January 2019, 329, 375, 355, 283, December 2012, 294, yeah. January 2013, 247, January 2009. There is a lot of other 250, 300 yeah. sale months. And those were months that were not crippled by a pandemic, right? Exactly. So, so I have to say, as much as the, the media is going to say that, you know, the market has tanked, I'm really surprised that we had that many sales. No, you're right. It is actually a positive sign. And, and, you know, some people might wonder what's happening with prices and it's still too early to tell, but you know, someone asked me this on a previous interview I just did. And so I, I went back the last seven days and there's been 103 sales in the last seven days. And the, the sale price to li original list price ratio is 97.6%. The, so, the price. Yeah. Yeah. The average price, average sale price versus the original list price. So even even the prices right now aren't showing that they're coming down drastically based upon what people well, are originally listing them at. Well, let's look at our other metrics here, right? So yeah. our average prices, so single family home. Um, when we look at our benchmark, for instance, here, so April 2020, benchmark price for uh, Greater Victoria, 7.75.9 versus um, last April, 7.42.4. So in yeah. other words, we're up. That's the benchmark, by the way, right? If you yeah. look at the average sale price, so we were down 10% from last month. It looks horrible. But let's not forget that last month we had the all-time high of $986,000 due to the fact that there were more higher-end properties, fewer uh, lower-end properties that sold, right? The, yeah. the, the key here is the HPI, which is the um, example house that we use, right? Yeah. And, and if you're wondering why prices are holding, because people are going to say uh, sales are down 60%, prices must be going down too. And why is it not, Kyle? Why is it not? Well, it's the lack of inventory. So that's where we ah, kind of started going. And so, yes. and, and I also talk about, the, you know, there's still lots of people in Victoria that work in government, military, nurses, teachers that have very stable jobs. And so they're not as worried about, you know, job loss. And so they're still out there. They're very active. You know, Angie and I both have clients that have been looking to buy a house for the last three, six, nine, 12 months. And the, the properties that are coming along that fit those criteria people are still wanting to jump on them because they've been waiting so long for a house and they'd rather, you know, own a home than necessarily rent or whatever those may be. But, um, you know, I was in a competing offer situation this week. Uh, the property. Yeah, oh my had, God. Can you imagine yeah. that? Like of all times, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, yeah. now both, both people, it was actually competing offers where the, the final sale price will probably be under ASCII. We didn't actually win that situation, but um, it was a unique property in a great location. had a lot of good features and it ended up being two different parties. And we are hearing that in other cases that, you know, some of those bread and butter type properties, because they fit the local market, uh, they're still seeing d lots of demand because there's just nothing available. And I think yeah. we're going to talk about some of those numbers now. And, and you know, that was a good point that you brought up. I mean, I was, uh, uh, my wife Sue and I were talking yesterday. So one of our tenants is military, right? Because, yeah. you know, my question was, how is, how is our tenants, how are our tenants doing? Yeah. And she's like, he's military. He's good. Right. Uh, so not it, it, what we're dealing with right now is terrible as it is. And it is terrible. By the way, uh, we at the primary, the state team shout out to all the frontline and, and care workers that are out there. Man, of course. Yeah. Fantastic job. But, you know, um, yes, there are people suffering. Yes, there are people who are unemployed right now. Yes, uh, it is a terrible time. But on the other hand, 
there's a lot of people out there that are doing okay, right? Well, and you, you and I have talked about it many different times in presentations we've done that, you know, government, military, education, and retirement, those have always been those four kind of pillars of found, the foundational stable market that Victoria has always had. Because yeah, so, and tourism is usually one of those, and yeah. that's out of the way right now. <coughs> there is no tourism going and exactly, yet still, and yet it's still happening, right? And then the other interesting one is is tech, and and tech is now the biggest you know GDP creator in Victoria. Now some people that I've talked to in the tech sector are a little bit slower, but a lot of them are actually a lot busier. And some some of my tech clients are actually looking to hire people right now, yeah. because as the whole world looks to go online right now and become more digital, some of, a lot of those tech services that we provide here in Victoria are actually seeing more demand. So, yeah. and that's where maybe th that's where those opportunities are going to be is that certain industries right now are actually busier than they were pre COVID. You, th you and think so of all those people who are ordering products online or taking classes or communicating yeah. online in all the tech, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so that's what I think will help Victoria, you know, recover quicker as we work through this and we will need to support, you know, like you said, those frontline workers and, and people in the restaurant and tourism and retail industry, we all need to be there to support them, but there will be a good majority of the market that will still be able to weather this and, and be in an opportunity to be ready to purchase after this is done. All right. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a long one and, and I'm sorry, but we're talking a lot here. It's all good stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. What I wanted to show you because I have the screen is remember what I was saying earlier, we got 287 sales. You can see right here, 287 sales for last month. I need you to pay attention to this number. This is active listings for the month. So of, of the 287 sales, we ended up with uh, active inventory of 2305. Now, remember I pointed out those other months with low, okay, here, this one here. Uh, this was January, 2013. Let's look at this here. January, 2013, 3,800 listings, right? Yeah. Let's look, let's look over here. Uh, December, 2008, 239 sales. December, oh, we got to go on the other screen. December, 2008, uh, where's the December? 3,800 listings, right? Um, oh, you look at November, 2008, 268 sales. 4,400 listings, right? Yeah. Uh, man, the, okay, so that's double the activity, the, double the inventory that we have right now with about the same number of sales. And you, some of you uh, keen viewers now are saying, hey, remember that? That was the end of 2008 and the beginning of 2009. What happened then? Exactly. Yeah, that was our, well, last, that was our well, last economic crash, right? Exactly. But yeah. what's happened since what's happened since 2008 to now is Victoria's population has grown rapidly. Our our net our net migration to the island has doubled or two and a half times since then yeah. because of those other economies we talked about. So, you know, we've had high population growth. We've had you know tech really take off. So there, we've stabilized the market in other ways since that last recession as well. And so, yeah. um, you know, just these are all the different things we're looking at and how we provide our perspective as we kind of project. Oh, the you be, we got to be. I was going to say yeah. we got to be careful. No, we're not careful. We just say it the way it is. But see, the thing yeah. is, almost every time we do one of these videos, ladies and gentlemen, we get somebody that messages us or says, "You guys, you paint a rosy picture only because you want to make more sales and blah 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 blah." But these are the numbers. This is the reality. How do you yeah. argue with prices that haven't dropped? with sales that haven't gone to zero, because that's the difference. 287 may be a low figure, but it's not like it's 50 or 20, right? Well, well and I think that when we, our commentary is also based upon what you just did. It's based upon history. Now, no, no two events are ever similar, but you, know, you look at the past and how, how have things recovered and, and how do those different ratios compare. And so, yeah, we're not just making these things up to sound rosy. We, we use historical perspective to frame where we're going forward. So. But, but there's, there's, a, there's another level to this as well, too. The economists take all this data, which, by the way, the real estate board provides, right? And the yeah. economists typically just have their own twist on it. And, hey, they're economists. That's their job, right? But the extra level that we provide to you guys is the fact that we are boots on the ground. We're the people that are actually interacting with consumers who are calling about buying and selling. Economists don't get those phone calls, right? No. We're, no. The, we're the ones. So we can tell you that the prime real estate team has not been sitting around self-isolate and looking for things to do. Uh, we're doing stuff, right? We're on the phone. Well, we're on the phone talking to our clients and, and that's how I educate myself on how consumers are feeling. And, and yeah. as I've said, the last seven to 10 to two, seven days to two weeks, 
that that confidence is starting to come out of consumers and there's a little bit more optimism about their health and, and the state of things and so you know we're not we're not making this stuff up it's, it's coming from those conversations which are yeah. what everyone else is having too yeah and i i gotta say i've said i've said it before i'm surprised i'm surprised that it is as active as it is i'm surprised that uh prices are holding as they are because uh, yep. there's a lot, there's a lot of people, including us. I mean, we're self isolating. We're home. We're not going out, you know, like we yep. used to do, right? But hey, this is this is reality, right? Yeah, and and every month will continue to unfold, and as things change, we'll adjust and and provide those stats as we can. But we're working with the, the numbers that we have in front of us right now. Yeah, there we go. All right, uh, everyone, thanks for watching. I know it was a long one, but uh, you know, we just got wild up, right? And I'm <laughs> and I'm waiting. I'm waiting for those guys to message and say oh, that the, we're, the trolls yeah. will be around. Don't oh, worry. I know. <laughs> I know. Anyways, that is, uh, that's our Friday report. That's our uh, month end report. We will be here for you guys this time uh, next month, myself, Kyle, Angie, and the rest of the prime team. See you guys later. Thanks.